Let's pray as we start. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you that you are a great God. Uh, thank you, Lord, our lives are in your hands. No matter what we go through, you are with us always, God. And Lord, I just pray that you, uh, you know, each and every one of us here would know your presence and your nearness, that you are concerned about our lives and you want us to walk by faith. And you want us, every area of our lives, to be governed by faith, God. And so I pray this morning, would you speak to us? I submit myself to you, and I hide behind your word, and I pray, let your word speak for itself. And I pray, Father, that at the end of it all, we will give you all the glory and all the honor, uh, the honor that you deserve. And whatever we may be going through, Father, anyone may be battling with lots of different things, God. I just pray that at the end of it all, they will know that they have victory in you. That our victory only comes in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I am so excited to be here, as I said, and we are continuing in our studies in the book of Ephesians. And today we are looking at verse 16. That's what we're going to look at, just one verse. Verse 16. And I'm thinking I'm going to to split it this week and next week will just be camped at verse 16. Uh, I'm, 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 we're not going to finish it today, but I just want us to, um, to camp there for a little while. There's so much that I want us to, to look at because faith is one of the difficult things. We struggle with faith. We are people of faith, but actually to walk by faith and to trust God is very difficult. Uh, we struggle with it. And so here we find Paul, an apostle and founder of the church, he was put in jail. And as he was in jail, he's writing a letter to the church and he's encouraging the church. And this letter has been evaluated and preached about for over 2,000 years. And it shows me that in your darkest day, in your darkest day, your darkest day can be your most um, uh, beneficial days. Because the enemy thought that he had put Paul in prison he had locked him and stopped him from feathering the gospel. And so the gospel is now chained, is now in prison. But even when he was in prison, Paul didn't say, poor me. He didn't say, oh, look at me. Look at what's going on around me. But Paul realized and he says, I have to exercise my faith regardless of where I am. Your darkest days can be your most beneficial days. Just remember that. When the enemy is pressing in, it can produce something inside of you that the enemy intended for evil, God will make it for your good. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And, and so um, don't let those dark moments keep you back from reaching your destiny. Don't let those dark, those dark days, those dark moments make, you know, you know, stop you from making a difference in the world and say, oh, look what's happening around me. But you continue to do and make a difference. So Paul, uh, Paul's greatest moments in ministry, they happen in, you know, in times of prison, when he was in prison. Most of the letters that we read now, they were written when he was actually going through difficulty. He was in shackles and, and he was stopped and, and they were there and treated. And the prisons, they're not like the prisons we have nowadays. You know, they've got TV, sometimes they even go on holidays, well, I'm told. But those prisons, they were like dungeons and they were dark and, and he's there and he says, I am going to save God. I am going to do what God has asked me to do. So if you feel like you are in prison today, anybody feels like that, you feel like you are in prison right now, hold on, it's not yet over until God, God still got lots to do through you. And God wants to accomplish so much with you. And so we're going to read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16, it says this. Above all, in light of everything that I've talked about, the belt of truth, the, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, and the gospel of peace, in light of all of that, above all, above all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Ah, the shield of faith. The enemy, when he comes, I don't know if you've been in that place where the enemy just presses in and he just releases venom on you. Anybody been there? Uh, uh, the shield of faith makes a difference. Uh, the shield of faith protects us. The shield of faith guards us. Paul is giving us armor to withstand when we come against the attacks of the enemy. And he's saying, you can't deal with those darts when they come if you don't have faith. And this is what he's saying. And here's what's interesting about this shield of faith. The shield of faith that Paul is talking about 
He, it is not a small little shield, and, and we see uh, the little shield. This is a big shield, and this shield is like a, it's like an oval door shape, like, and, and they would hold it and they would hide behind that that shield. And it's interesting why this this um, uh, uh, this shield was that big because it protects the whole body. It has to protect the whole body from the darts or from the attacks and the arrows of the enemy. And, and whatever the enemy throws at them, they're able to hide behind that shield. Amen, somebody. Now, it's significant that it's not little. It's not a small shield. It's a full body shield. And it is shaped in a door shape. It's an over-shaped shield. And, and it protects the whole body as we talked about. Now, uh, the shield is the first line of of protection against the enemy. The shield is the first line of defense to protect you against the enemy. The, you know, um, he said, I want you to get the shield and I want you to get this shield and use it in every aspect of your life, not just some aspect of your life. The reason why it covers the whole body of, uh, of the soldier is that to make sure that there is no area of their body is vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. And so he says, if you are going to win and if you are going to put off the arrows of the enemy, you need to make sure that you have, can you just take me down a little bit? You have the shield of faith that protects you every area of your life. You know, sometimes we choose to say, I'm only going to pick and choose areas where we want to apply our faith. And Paul says, no, I want the shield of faith. I want faith to protect every area of your life. Every arena of your life has to be protected by faith. Amen, somebody. So it's designed to protect every aspect of your life. The shield is the first line of protection when the enemy comes against you. The shield of faith. Your faith rise up. I raise up a hallelujah. Now, what's important is a lot of Christians only implement Christian principles, uh, you know, uh, in certain areas of their lives. I don't know about you, but many, many Christians, they only implement Christian principles in certain areas of their lives. Uh, they say, actually, you can have my Sunday, God, but you can't have my Monday. You can't have my Saturday nights. I can do whatever I want to do on Saturday nights and I'll party and do whatever it is, but I'll give you a Sunday and I'll come and I'll just behave. I'll be a good Christian on Sunday. But the rest of the week, you live like the devil. And, 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 and Paul is saying, you need to be protected. The whole area, the whole, your whole life needs to be governed by faith. Your faith should inform every aspect of your life. Amen, somebody. He says, I want you to take the shield of faith and use it to protect every aspect of your, every arena of your life. God is concerned about every area of your life. That area that you think, oh, maybe I can do this. God doesn't mind, you know, mind. God is okay with it. No, he is concerned about every area of your life. What I discover about God, no matter what I'm facing or what I'm going through, God is concerned about every area of my life. Every arena of my life, he is concerned. He, he takes interest in that. And he wants me to be governed by faith. And there's nothing that you're going through in life that God is not interested. That issue that you're going through, God is very much interested. And he wants to know about it. He very much wants you to respond in faith. There is nothing, nothing that he's not concerned about. There's nothing that you, have, you face that he has not spoken about. Everything that you go through, God is concerned. Everything. Tell the person next to you everything. So you take this, 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 this shield of faith. He says this. He says this about this shield of faith. He says, I want you to incorporate the shield of faith in every area of your life. This is what he's telling us here. Incorporate the shield of faith in every area of your life. Your, your school, uh, your work, your playing basketball, if you play basketball like Greg, uh, whatever you do, your recreation, your holiday. You know, some people say, I'm going on holiday, so I don't actually go to church because I'm on holiday. And he's saying, no, 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 no. Incorporate your faith wherever you are. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. And this is what he's telling them. And so, so this thing, which means actually rely upon God. Rely upon God. Have confidence in God. Trust God. 
Ah, that's difficult. Trusting God. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I find that that's one of the hardest things to do, to trust God. When the doctor tells you something, when your bank account says something, when everybody seems to be coming against you, and, and you are to trust God in that, when the world is saying this and everything, that, you know, on the ground you just see everything working against you. And Paul is saying, trust God in that. Have you ever been in that place? I think it's one of the hardest things to trust God and to believe that God has the ability to take care of me. Uh, to, you know, sometimes I sing over my life and I say, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. You know, sometimes thoughts come and the enemy uses thoughts, words, attitude, behaviors of other people, even of yourself, to bring about this. And sometimes you have to declare over your life, God will take care of me. Amen. God will take care of me. No matter what we go through, God will take care to take care of my needs. He will take care of my family. He will take care of every aspect of my life. He will take care of my business. He will take care of my projects. God will take care of us. So have faith incorporated in the whole area of your life. That's what he wants you to get today. Have faith incorporated in the area, all areas of your life. We are Christians who have faith implemented in every sphere of our life. Faith is impl implemented. Whether we're at work, we're surrounded by non-believers, faith. We look at everything through the lenses of faith. We deal with everyone through, through faith. And, and we treat people through our faith. And we respond to situation through faith. Amen? We don't respond like the heathens respond. But we respond as children of God who have hope. And I'm always reminded of that verse that says, don't mourn like the heathens mourn. Because now that you are in Christ, you have hope. And so even in our mourning, we should mourn as people who have hope. We don't mourn as people who do not have hope. Amen. And so he reminds us that we have, to, we have faith incorporated, not just some areas, every area of our lives. And that's how God wants us to live our lives, you know, faith incorporated. I don't want, you know, to pastor a church where people come and check check off religious activity, or we just do this on a Sunday, and we check off, and oh, we come, we sing, we sit down, and we go home, but our lives are not changed, are not transformed. Each and every Sunday, I pray that we are made uncomfortable. When we come here, you need to go home and say, oh man, church today, I didn't like church today because it was really poking me. I don't want to go home and say, actually, our church was lovely today. What was lovely about church today? Because whenever we come in the presence of God, he reveals our shortcomings. We begin to see our cracks, our faulty foundation, and he challenges us and causes us to desire to change. If you stay the way you are, I'm praying today that God change me. Let faith rise up with me. I want to be uncomfortable when I come in the presence of God. And that's my prayer for each and every one of us. Amen. So here's um, uh, where people mess up. You know, we start to pick and choose. We start to pick and choose which part of our lives we are going to let be governed by God. We say, God, you can govern this area. Uh, uh, you have nothing to do with that area, God. My relationship, God, you have nothing to do with that. I can make those decisions. God, you can manage this, but you can't manage my money, God, because you don't know how to manage money, God. And so I am the one who's going to take care of my money. Whatever you say about my money, God, I am not going, to, I'm not interested in that. And we begin managing and governing ourselves. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Which areas of your life are you in charge? Are you governing? that you have declared that actually God is not good enough to do that. Remember we said a few weeks ago that we own nothing. Everything belongs to God. And so every area of our lives belongs to God. Even the grace to go to work, it's grace that's extended to us. And so we approach life through faith. And sometimes we can violate biblical principles, violate our walk with God. We lean on, your, on our own understanding and we do our own thing and do those things. And, and we we'll always ultimately end up with drama pain. Anytime anyone decides to go their own way, they end up with drama in their lives. Pain. It's a crush that's just waiting to happen. Amen. You have to trust God. We have to trust God. We have to trust God. We have to rely upon God even if everything is looking doom and gloom. We have to learn to rely upon God. Even as a church, we have to learn to trust God. 
even if it doesn't make sense. We put our eyes on God and say, God, we are trusting you. It's faith, amen. We walk by faith, not by emotions or by feelings, but we walk by faith. You have to look to God, look to God, look to God to meet every need of your life. Look to God. Many of us here could have died long back. You are not supposed to be here. I am not supposed to be here. But because of grace, because of grace that was extended, I'm still here. I'm able to speak today because grace was extended. You were supposed to be annihilated long back, but grace was over your life. Amen. I did, oh, I'm trying to be careful with this. I'm, no, no, no. You belong to God. It's grace. Your life is grace. And so we need to approach life through eyes of faith. God, my life is not my own. My life belongs to you, God. Amen. 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 And, and so a shield of faith, this shield, full body, length of faith. Here's the purpose of that. It extinguishes the fiery darts. And here's what the text says. that The shield of faith will extinguish or quench or put out and all the fiery darts that comes our way. Today, there will be some fiery darts that are going to be released over your life. And these fiery darts, they will always come. So faith gives you victory against the darts of the enemy. That's what faith does. Where the enemy releases those darts towards you, those arrows towards you, those spears, those machetes, some of you, that's the language you speak or you understand. When the enemy releases those machetes towards you, your faith quenches or puts them away. It causes you to stand no matter what's coming your way. This devil sends those arrows, you know, uh, and, 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 and their spears or arrows that, are, uh, that he throws at you. And what he would do is he would take, you know, what they would do during the time, uh, in the Roman time, what they would do is that they would take those arrows and those spears and they would put flames, they would put something that was combustible uh, that they would put so that when they fire these arrows they will go with flames and when they hit wherever the target they will cause this boom of fire and this fire and the whole idea was to inflame and destroy whatever the target is when the enemy releases these arrows towards your life it's not to protect you it's not to say hey how are you i'm just checking on you it's to destroy you is to destroy each and every one of us. And, and so it's to ignite a fire and cause bigger fire to take place. That's, that's, that's the intention. And ultimately, that's what the devil wants to do in your life. When he releases those arrows, those darts, those, uh, he throws the spear into your life, he wants you to be inflamed. And I was looking at that word fiery, what, what it means. It means to ignite, to glow, to, you know, ignited, glowing, inflamed. And he wants to throw and toss those things to cause a fire to happen in your life. The, you know, inflaming everything in, in, in something in your life and, and creating this passion in your life and creating anger, creating frustration. I don't know about you, when the enemy releases or throws these darts, he wants to create fear. And there was one big arrow that came around the world and, and it just was aimed at, you know, at the world and, and so much fear was pewed up in the atmosphere and everybody, even the Christians themselves, they were running left and right, left and right. We don't know what to do. What do you mean you don't know what to do? Your faith needs to be able to say, I know no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. No matter what the enemy throws at me, I am going to stand in my faith. Amen. But a lot of us will be found very much compromising, running. And the enemy wants to do that. He wants to create this passion. He wants to create fear. And he wants to create, you know, uh, frustrations in you, anger in you, something in your life. That's what he wants to do. And those fiery dust are often manifested in thoughts, uh, thoughts that the enemy just throws a thought and tells you, you're not good enough. And many of us have entertained those thoughts. We receive and some of us, we actually go and look for those fiery darts, you know, you know, oh, did you hear they're talking this about me? And we entertain, we give more air time to those thoughts, you know. And so they come and they manifest in thoughts, they manifest in words, uh, you know, that are uttered towards you and they're coming towards you, attitudes that people have. They just come, they look at you, they go, cha, and you go, oh, hey, did you see what's happening? And instead of actually letting your faith and saying, I'm, in, I'm walking in peace, I'm not going to let your problem become my problem. I am going to continue on my journey walking. Our issue is that we allow ourselves, we put ourselves and we interact with the arrows. And they come and we entertain them. 
And so they come this way, this fiery dust. They come and, and, and you know, in these words, in these behaviors, in a number of other things. But the whole goal is they want to inflame you. They want to cause frustration in your life. You're at work and the boss just says something. And you, ah, ah. And you become frustrated and, and the situation uh, is spewing and the situation is churning and, and you don't like that. And the whole idea is that you are going to release and become inflamed and, and you respond uh, with, with frustration. You respond in anger. You respond in awe, oh, in fear. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if I can do this or that. But God says, I want you to respond in shalom. Remember shalom last week? And so he says, your faith is your shield that puts off all the arrows that the enemy wants to send to you. The enemy wants you to get upset. He wants you to get scared. He wants you to get angry. Oh, look what they've done to me. Because of what they've done, that's why I responded the way I responded. No, 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 no. You don't respond. You are a child of God. You respond in faith. Let your faith respond. Let your faith rise up. Amen. Amen. And it comes in different forms, this, this, um, uh, what the enemy does. But what, but what we have to learn is we have to learn to let those darts, those words, those attitudes, those things that people say inflame you. We have to let them pass over us. And it's beautiful when you do that. I don't know if you've been in that place, somebody comes, and, and you, that, those that are married, you know, sometimes you're just at home minding your own business. And maybe your partner just come, or your husband comes, and, or your wife, it could be either way. Is that right, Sister Juliet? It could be anybody, right? Uh, somebody comes and they'll just say they've had a frustrated day. I mean, uh, at home, at, at, at work, they were frustrated at work, and they come and they will just say something, and the whole atmosphere changed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And how you respond. You need to let your faith say, actually, I, I, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to choose to be quiet. But we don't keep quiet, do we? Sister Stalisha, do we keep quiet? No, we don't. Because everything, everything in us says you have to respond. The flesh says respond. But your faith should be able to say, I don't have to respond because the battle belongs to God. It's not him. It's not her. It's the spirit behind that's throwing arrows and it wants to bring about confusion and he wants to bring about instability and he wants to bring about, you know, chaos in the house. And you see your child, you know, from nowhere, you say, good morning. And you have to say, hey, what's going on? You know, and you have to respond, not like them and say, I'm not talking to them, but you respond in faith, amen. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's very, as I shared with you last week, and I said when somebody says un unkind things, how we respond, it's either we can choose to land those, those darts that the enemy throws. As a pastor, you get told all sorts of things, especially when you finish preaching, you know, people come and share all sorts of things. And the idea is to derail, to draw your attention away from where God has said we need to go. And you have a choice whether to land those arrows. Our issue is many of us, we are looking at the arrows and say, oh, wow, look at the arrow. Did you hear what they say about me? Did you see what they were saying? How can you actually say that? And, and we continue focusing on the arrow. But we need to choose to say, I am not entertaining that arrow. God has called me and I'm here to do what God has called me to do. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. So we need to know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. So it is faith that quenches the, the fiery darts of the enemy. And I want you to get that in your heart and, and in your mind today. When those darts come, those thoughts, those words, those, uh, those attitudes, when they are coming to you and they are flaming at you, I don't care where they are coming from. You need to realize, remember, it is not the person that you are fighting. It is not your spouse that you are fighting. It is not your child. In other words, you should feel sorry for them because they are being used by the enemy. The enemy uses people and, and he will control people. Every single one of us here can be used by the enemy if we allow him. And so when we are fighting, when you've got this chaos going on, it's not a human thing. It's actually a spiritual force. This is what he says. He says we don't fight against physical 
and against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities, against powers, against authorities in the heavenly places. Amen. And so faith needs to rise up. Here's what Hebrews says. Hebrews says, so if we can just learn that one lesson, you know, if we can just learn that one lesson, you know, if we could just stop letting words, attitudes, and, 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 and of people and behaviors of people, if we could just learn to not entertain and let them stop us or slow us down, we will go a long way as a people of God. But man, you know, I keep rebuking myself and say, don't, don't, don't go that path. Don't let somebody else's opinion, somebody else's bad day, become your bad day. And everything in me, and I'll be talking to myself, and I say, oh, but honestly, look what they've done. They, we look what they're saying, and you need to, to respond, and you need to, to tell them the truth. You need to set things straight. But my faith says, no, no, no. I don't need to do that. Let, let them do whatever they do. I don't have to have the last word. Let them think what they want to think. God, you know my heart. And I want to encourage you in every situation, let faith rise up. Choose to respond in faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, this is what it says. Hebrews 11 verse 1. It says, now faith is confidence. It's confidence in what we hope for. And here, 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 here what it is. It's assurance about what we do not see. So confidence and assurance. This is what faith is. So biblical faith is this word called pistis. It, me, it, it appears about 240 times in the New Testament. And here's what uh, the definition of what faith is. It actually means acting on truth. So faith means we are acting, we are choosing to act on what is truth. What God says, God's opinion, what God says about the matter. It, you know, it, truth is God's opinion on the matter. And so we are choosing to respond to what actually God says, not what any person says about faith. Amen. I'm saying I'm going to with what God says on the matter. No matter how the situation looks, what God says about me is what matters. Others might say, oh, I don't like your ear. I don't like your hair. I don't like whatever the situation. But my God says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what I'm going to go with. Amen. And so we go with God's opinion, which means I can act on what God says. Whatever God says, that's what I am going to act on, on God's opinion on the matter. And what I do, you know, when I do that, I, 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 you know, I shield myself. The enemy comes, Jojo, and he says that you look this, or you are this, or you are short, or you are too tall, or you are this. And you, when, you, when you raise your faith and you say, I'm choosing to go with what God says about me, what you are doing is you are raising a shield of faith to block those arrows away from you. Or you can choose to land those arrows and say, they're right. And you believe what they say rather than believe what God says. That causes me to say amen. 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 Thank you for that one. Amen. Uh, if only we could hear God's reports. If only we could go with what God says. We would save ourselves a lot of stress. If only we could hear God's opinion on the matter. We would save ourselves a lot of tablets, a lot of pills that we have to take. Because the enemy just releases these darts and he wants to annihilate and destroy us. And he will make us feel small. He will make us feel like we are not able to. And that's what the enemy does. But God's opinion on the matter, he wants us to shield ourselves. This is important because faith is not feelings. Uh, faith is not, you, you need to be careful of, um, of that. Because uh, if you feel your way into it, you will feel your way out of it. And we've had people here who come and say, I love the church. You know, I love, what is it that you love about the church? Ah, I love HGB Church, it's great, you know, I just feel good when I come. When you feel your way in, you're going to feel your way out. Because there will be times when God calls us into situation, into terrains that are not comfortable. And you, are not, you, you, you feel the ground moving in this place and you are going to be thinking, oh, oh I don't like what's going on. But you, that's when you need to then be able to stand and say, I'm here because God has called me here. Not because we are feeling or we like the music or we like this or I like the way the pastor talks or I love this or that or they've got nice chairs so I'm going to that church. No. You feel your way in, you will feel your way out. And so we have to be careful about that. I have a shield that I can put when, when the enemy attacks my, my life. I have a shield that I put, I lift up and I say, enemy, you have no power. 
You can put thoughts. You can plant ideas in me. I have to shield myself. Amen. So, um, in, in, we act on what God says. So, it's not feelings. And a lot of people live by their emotions. No, men, no wonder why they actually roller emotional roller coasters. They are up today. They are down. I love the church. And you hear people come here and say, this is the best church ever. And this pastor is the best pastor ever. I'm sure you've had people say that. And then tomorrow, the same people you come hear them and say, this is the worst pastor ever. This is the worst church ever. Anybody hear what I'm talking about? Yesterday, they were saying, this is the best church ever. But now this is the terrible church ever. Because they felt their way in. They were not anchored on the truth. They are not operating on the truth, on faith. They are operating on their emotions. And God is saying, I'm looking for people who walk by faith, not by sight, not by emotions, not by feelings, but people who will say, whether the church is going through the valley of the shadow of death, I am going to stand because this is where God has planted me. I am not going to let any thoughts, any ideas derail me. But I'm here because God has called me. I'm not here because of the pastor. I'm not here because of the chairs that they have. I am here because God has brought me here for such a time as this. And those are the people that God is looking for. That will say, I'm not here because of the music. Because tomorrow, they might sing out of key. What are you going to do? But we are walking by faith. We don't feel our way in. Amen. Faith is not feelings. Faith is not feelings. For we walk by faith. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Or emotions or feelings. It's not about what you see. It's not even about what, what's going on around you. It's not about what you feel. Uh, A.W. Tozer said it this way. Any faith, that must be suppo- you know, any faith that must be supported by the evidence or, of the senses is not real faith. Any faith that must be supported by the evidence of, um, of the senses, whether you see, feel, taste, whatever, is not real faith. Uh, And and faith um, and feelings are two totally different things. So feelings are always circumstantial. Uh, I feel happy because of what's going on. I I feel sad because when I look at my bank account, it's not good. Uh, Anybody? (laughs) I feel happy because of that relationship that I have. You know, and so it's circumstantial. You know, I feel sad because that person left. Uh, it's always circumstantial. Uh, but faith is different. Your faith is different. You want to understand this. Faith is a choice. So whenever you are faced uh, with a situation, you have a choice to make, whether to walk by faith or to walk by feelings. So one is dependent on our emotions and the other one is dependent on a choice that you make. You choose to walk in faith despite of the emotions, despite of what's going on, despite of what uh, your bank account may be saying, you choose to still see faith and operate in faith. And here's what it says here. This is, this is why Paul started by using this word. You know, when he started looking at these things, he says, put on the, uh, the full arm of God. And he says, put on this belt, put on the blessed of righteousness, put on this. And now he changes his language here. And so you have to understand the reason why he's saying put on, he's saying actually you always need truth. You always need righteousness. You always need the peace of God. And so it, it's, it's oh, you can't take this off. You can't actually have it today. I'm going to be righteous today and tomorrow because I'm going to this party. And so um, I'm going to take it off a little bit so I could have my own time a little bit. No, you always need to be righteous before God. Uh, but now notice the way he changes the way he talks now. He then says, actually, uh, take up. Instead of putting on, now he's saying, take up the shield of faith. Uh, take up the shield of faith. And, 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 and he's saying, take up the shield. It means that there is an as needed basis. You don't have this shield of faith always. Can you imagine? Maybe you're going somewhere and you say to your friend, let's go for some chips. Uh, or whatever it is that you eat on a regular basis. I don't know. When you're just going out and you've got your shield, you know, you're all right over there. How is chips okay? And all those things. That would be weird, isn't it? 
Uh, and so you don't, we don't do relationships like that. Uh, we pick up the shield of faith when there are moments that come up. And there will be moments that maybe some of us are going to go through. And those moments will come up and you'll be sitting there and you say, maybe Margaret, you're at work. He's always Margaret, you're at work. And you then, everything is going well. And all of a sudden, something happens. <laughs> Margaret, you say, okay, this is the moment for me to pick up my shield of faith. Many of us, we forget that part. We become overwhelmed. We become discouraged. Oh, why am I here? Oh, what's going on here? The enemy is just releasing all this on me. Oh, devil this. Oh, devil that. No, 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 no. You pick up your shield of faith. There's a situation that some of us here are going through. God is saying, pick up the shield of faith. And you just hide behind the shield of faith. And they will be throwing the darts at you and to discourage you, to inflame you, to cause fire on you. I'm going to hide behind the shield of faith. So we take up the shield of, God, of, of faith. And we need to take up the shield of faith over our children. They're going through difficult times. Lord, I just raise a shield of faith over my kids. Whatever situation, when they go to school, I'm telling you, you need to raise a shield of faith over your children. Uh, and raise that shield and just say, God, as they go to school, I raise up a shield of faith. Whatever the negative, the, you know, the enemy speaks into their lives. Whatever they hear, even at school, the things they hear at school is meant not for their good. It's actually to rob them of their innocence. It's actually to release lots of rubbish things to our children, to make them think that you can be whatever you want. The other day, one of my children, I'm not going to say who, but he came to me and he says, we were in class and we were told that you can be whatever you want to be. And he says, well, I can be, I want to be a football. Uh, or I'm going to be a uh, whatever, a tree. And, and, and so the idea is that actually, we actually, we, we forget who we are. Our identity becomes lost. And I want to encourage us to put on that shield. Protect yourself. Don't lend any arrows of the enemy that just comes and just say, oh, give them to me. Give them to me. They talk to you negatively. I raise up a shield of faith. I'm not going to allow that to derail me. Just tell the person next to you, raise up a shield of faith. Because faith is a protective barrier between you and the attacks of the enemy. When you haven't got the, you know, the shield of faith up, you are vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. You're vulnerable to the attacks of it. So if, if that's the case, then we need to know some key faith um, keys um, to help us with the foundation of that. And I'm going to come to those next week. Um, uh, we're going to look at um, how do we raise up these key facts about faith. What do we do? I'll give you the first one is that uh, faith must be received. So we're going to start next week by looking at faith. In order for us to walk in faith, we need to receive faith first before we can actually walk in faith. And, and, and that's what we're going to start with next week. Uh, but I just sense that as we finish now, I just sense that maybe there's somebody here who may be going through stuff. And you need to just symbolically today just say, you know, I'm just raising the shield. And it might not be for you. It might be maybe for the person next to you. I just want to raise a shield of faith to protect. Maybe for this community. What would happen if as a church, each and every one of us, we raise a shield of faith over our children, over our families, over our communities? And just say, Lord, we know that the enemy wants to inflame them. He wants to destroy them. He wants them to be on tablets. And they will just be crazy and, and, and just become angry. And, and, and we don't understand what's going on. We need to raise a shield of faith. Amen. Is if you are in that position and you're in agreement with me, why not just stand wherever you are? If you just feel like you need to raise a shield of faith over someone or maybe over your situation, maybe it's at work, maybe it's at home, wherever that you may find yourself. If you are here, just, just stand wherever you are. If you are online, just, uh, just again, stand wherever you are or just uh, reach out wherever you are. And we want to just pray with you. And Lord, we just come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. We pray. We raise a shield, Lord, where the enemy has told us that it can't be done. 
We raise that shield, Father. We raise that shield, Lord. Lord, I speak over your church right now. I speak over each and every individual standing right now who may be going through some stuff, God, that no one else knows or understands, God. We raise, Father, that, that shield of faith, God. And we hide behind that, Father. We hide behind that, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, there are so many people, so many battling, Father. They are under the attack of the enemy, God. And I speak over them, God. May they be victorious, Father. Will they be victorious, God, in every area of their lives, Father? May they be victorious in the name of Jesus. God, we fix our eyes not on what we can do, but we fix our eyes on the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father. We lift our eyes to you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, God. And, and so our eyes are on you, Father. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that not not only are we conquerors, Father, but your word says that we are more than conquerors. And so we thank you, Father, for that knowledge, oh God. We are so thankful, God, that you did not bring us to this place to fail us. But Lord, you have brought us here to be conquerors, Father, to conquer, Father. Father, you have brought us to be, uh, to be overcome every attack of the enemy that he brings to us, Father. Lord, that the enemy might throw whatever the enemy throws at us, Father. We hide behind, Father, your shield, the shield of faith God we pray father in the name of Jesus we raise a shield of faith and say God you are with us God you are for us God we raise that faith father that shield of faith God and we remind ourselves God that you are for us you fight our battles you stand for us God you are with us God even when the enemy makes us, Father, to feel like we are not on our own and nobody cares, God, we take that shield of faith that says, God, you say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we hold that shield, Father, and we remind ourselves, he said in his word, he's with us to the very end of the age. And Father, we thank you, Father, and we thank you, Father, as we right now take that shield, God. We thank you, Father. It doesn't matter who is against us, Father. We will overcome, Lord. It doesn't matter what the report says. It doesn't matter what the situation says. But Lord, we pick up the shield of faith and we will be in victory, Father, because of what you have done on the cross, Father. Because we serve a God who is victorious, God. And, and we thank you, Father. Every bit of anxiety must go, Father. Every attack is now and void, Father. And today, we raise up a shield of faith, Father, to protect ourselves from whatever the enemy releases on us, Father. And so I pray, Father, whatever the enemy is throwing, Father, by faith today, we, we, we nullify them, Father. We, we, now, we render them void, Father. We render them now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for faith, God. Thank you that you have given us faith, Father. And we respond, Father, by just saying, Father, thank you that you are with us, God. Thank you, Lord. Faith that we have received from you, Father. So we can live for you, God. And so we thank you and we honor you, God. And I just pray right now, Father, over our young people and our children, God. We raise a shield of faith, Lord. Would you protect them, Father? Would you protect them, Lord, from all the arrows that are aimed at them? Some of them, they look colorful and bright and, and enticing, God. But, Lord, they are set up to destroy them, God. We raise a shield of faith over them, Father. We raise a shield of faith to protect them, Lord. Lord, every word that has been deposited in them, Lord, I pray each and every one of them, whenever they feel the attacks of the enemy, may they raise them, Father. May they raise them, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And so we pray, Father, even over our communities, we raise a shield of faith, Lord. Even over this nation, even right now, we raise a shield of faith, God. Over our homes, a shield of faith, God. Would you protect us, God? Lord, I pray a shield of faith over our minds, Father. What we hear, what we hear, Father, and the things that are said that we entertain, Lord. Lord, we raise a shield of faith. May we not land the arrows of the enemy that are intended to destroy us, God. But Father, may we stand as the people of God in every circumstance. We give you glory and we praise your name, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen, amen, amen.